Here we go. Hi, I'm Kyle Young, and we have another amazing opportunity for you to meet editors and talk to them about what they're acquiring uh, and the ones that you're going to speak with this year at Right to Publish. And I know one of the things that you want to know is what, what do they know? How can they help you in your writing career? What are they looking for? And honestly, I say it in every video, these videos are to make you realize like we're real people too. You can come up and have a conversation with us. We're not scary. And so we're going to tell you a little interesting facts about ourselves. And maybe you can mention that at the conference. And so you can realize we're, we're just like you. We're people. Like we live and breathe. And so hopefully this will help you. And so I have two amazing people here with me. I have Susan and, and Megan. And they are going to share a little bit about who they are and their companies. And so let's start with uh, the way it looks on my screen. We'll start with you, Susan. Can you tell us a little bit more about yourself and your company? All right. Well, I'm Susan Baggins, and I am an editor for Pelican Book Group and their imprints. Um, and I, I'm a content editor primarily. So um, you wanted to know what I want to, right? Well, let's go with, uh, you, can, you can say that if you want. What are you, what are you looking for? Yeah. Um, well, obviously, I want great fiction. I personally am a romance author and editor so any kind of romance especially romantic comedy romantic suspense are great great awesome well thank you and uh let's go with megan what are what kind of tell us about yourself and your company and what you can say what you're looking for okay um my name is megan minkus i work for discovery house um we are an offshoot of our daily bread ministries if you've seen the little booklet um a little tiny booklet um we're the book publishing imprint of that um we publish all it's all nonfiction. Uh, mostly Christian living devotional. Um, we're just now starting to get into the children's market. We started out with one line and it's going really well. So we're exploring new options and what that would look like. So um, yeah, just kind of starting to get into that a little bit. Well, great. So let's go with, tell us, Megan, a unique thing about yourself. Um, I have been riding horses since I was 10 years old and I have a Frisian named Nalis. I don't uh, know if you can I uh, see this picture on my phone, but oh, he's cool. adorable. And wow. I left it in 22 yesterday and I made him a horsey birthday cake. <laughs> wow, that's cool. That is a unique thing. So the horse, <laughs> the, there are some horse people I, I meet at conferences. So oh, they can yeah, all gravitate right. over and talk with you about horses. That's great. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> and Susan, what about yourself? Oh, there's so many interesting things. The one that comes to mind right now, though, is I have just entered into the fascinating and odd world of internet dating. So it's kind of a an interesting adventure. <laughs> wow, that sounds like a romance story coming out of that too. It could be. Novel. I don't know. There's some parallels for sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can tell you that most of my friends and family have all met their spouses at internet dating. So it is very successful. So yeah, so that, that's kind of the way nowadays. So good. Well, great. That's a great fact. Uh, let's go with Susan. Can you share some tips and advice for people that are making pitches that you think would help them make better pitches? Well, like you said, we're human and we're, we're not going to bite you. <laughs> Even if we're hungry, we're not going to bite you. But I, the best pitch I ever got was somebody who just was so excited about their story. They were telling me about their story. I actually started to believe that it was a real thing. I was like, do you know these people? I mean, they were so <laughs> in love with those characters and, and the, the story she was trying to tell me that, I mean, it was a no brainer. It was like, yeah, I want that. I want, so you need to believe in your story. I also like brainstorming. So if people want to just come and brainstorm with me about ideas, that's always fun for me too. So they that's don't a, have to pitch a story a if they're new and they just want to talk about how they might get a story going and I bounce around ideas. That's always fun. Good. That's an excellent tip. Thank you. That's, I know that's helpful. I always tell my clients, like, just go meet with people and ask them to help you on projects that maybe yeah. you're not ready to pitch because yeah. you will have a better pitch or a better project. So that's Absolutely. Great, that's yeah. wonderful. Megan, what about yourself? What are some tips that you think you can share for people for advice for making pitches? Um, kind of going with Susan said, don't be nervous. Um, we're, we're not going to bite. We, we love writing and um, editing and books as much as you do. Um, let's see. I um, basically just, just really own it. Like even if you haven't written the whole thing, even if you've only written a chapter or an outline or something, just still own the idea. And like what, what made you excited about it in the first place? Really like make, make me want, to like it as much as you do kind of um what else do i look for um mostly just like be be excited be um happy about it and like be um or be willing to hear um just a little bit of not 
pushback necessarily, but just be able to go back and forth with us. Maybe we'll ask you questions about it. Maybe we'll want you to parse something out and you're not quite there yet, but you can tell us that that's okay. Um, just be willing to have a conversation about it and let us kind of let, um, let us into your world a little bit. All right. Now, Megan, are there any books that you can think of right now that you've published recently as a house that would be kind of like a quintessential book that you'd love to see more written as well as? Ooh. It's a good, good uh, question. I, I added this one bonus. Uh, <laughs> <maybe>. <laughs> um, we just sent one off to press that'll be coming out soon. It's called The Prayer Coin by Elisa Morgan. Um, she's the um, uh, president emerita of uh, MOPS International. Um, and it's called the prayer coin. So it's um, about Jesus prayer in the garden of Gethsemane and using that as like a model prayer. It's the, um, the take this cup from me, but this isn't my will, but yours be done. So it's kind of flipping in between honesty and abandonment in your prayers, like coming to God with all of your mess and everything and just laying it all out there, but abandoning it all and acquiescing to his will and knowing that he has his uh, will in mind. So basically coming to, coming to the Bible and coming to really familiar passages, but with a little bit of a twist or a story that only you can tell or something about it that um, you don't really see in the market or you haven't heard before and just coming to those familiar passages and saying, well, what about, so um, something like that, because you think model prayer, you think the Lord's prayer. Um, I, had, I had never heard of the Gethsemane prayer like that before, and it was a huge eye-opening experience for me, and I loved working on that manuscript. So um, that, that kind of Christian living. That's great. Yeah. And Susan, what about, what about your company? What do you think you would be like a book you could say, man, I'd love to see more like this? Um, that's kind of a dangerous question because I'm an author too, and I publish through Pelican Book Group, so I'd like to say mine. There you go. That's the right <laughs> my books, um, because I write romance, and I also write uh, gothic regencies, believe it or not, a little gothic darker regency. than your Jane Austen yeah. <laughs> type stuff. Cool. And I have a lot of these books coming out right now, so um, that's been kind of exciting for me. I work on so many books right now, it's hard for me to pinpoint one that rises above the rest of them. I don't know if that makes sense, but... I think I've edited and turned in about five manuscripts this week alone. Wow. Um, to their wow. handing them back to the authors. So I've been blitzing on stuff and my brain is kind of mush. <laughs> right. Blitzing is good. Blitzing is good. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Great. So what would you like to see when an author sits down with you in a pitch? Do you want them to bring anything with you, such as a one sheet, business card? What would you like, Susan, for them to come with? If a one sheet helps them, that's fine. I don't really want to take anything away with me. Um, it's, it's hard because you can get really excited about a story when you're hearing somebody tell it, and then they may never submit it. So I don't need more paper littering my office because I've got plenty of it as it is. So if, it, if the one sheet helps that person, that's fine, but I don't need it. And, uh, but I would say if you're going to pitch to me and I tell you to submit, please do because a that's lot of good. them don't. That's good. Great, great advice. Uh, about, I think 70% in my experience, never 70 or 80% never send it in. Right. So. I have somebody I met a couple of years ago and I'm still on their case. Like, where's that book? <laughs> <laughs> I want to see that book. That's awesome. Well, great. <laughs> <laughs> Megan, what about you? Is there anything you'd like to see when, when someone sits down with you? Um, yeah. Like Susan said, a one sheet is definitely helpful, even if it's not for me to keep, even just bringing something so I can see like an outline. Um, an outline is really helpful for me, like a big picture, like where do you see this idea going? Um, or like, how do you introduce it? Where do you, how do you develop it? Where does, where do you end up? Just kind of a general, like, even if there's no sample chapter yet, if you can at least give me a rundown of like, this is basically how I want it to go, then that gives me an idea. Um, if it's right for our house, if we have something similar, or if it's something that we can really develop and help you dig into. Good. Great. And so uh, the next question would be where, when you look at a proposal and let's say electronic submission, when you get something in from an agent or an author, uh, when you look at it and open it, where's the first thing you go to look at, Megan? Ooh, um, I go to platform, honestly. Platform? <laughs> yeah. Um, the, the writing is really good. That is hugely helpful. Um, if you have basic, like basic structure, basic, really good hook and idea, that's helpful. Um, but if, if you are working on a platform or you know what a platform is, or um, you're, you're starting to really dig in and develop that, that is a huge help because um, like if, if nobody knows who you are, then we um, it's there, there's that much fewer people who won't hear about your book and hear how awesome your idea is. But if you're really starting to dig in and um, just kind of work in your circles of influence or start 
publishing blog posts in areas where you're kind of an expert and you're starting to kind of get into that world, that's when I realized, okay, you're really serious about this idea and this book and being in this world as a published author. So that's when I think, oh, you're really serious about this. Right. Good. Very good. So platform. Susan, what about you? Well, when you submit to Pelican Book Group, you do have to put a synopsis in the electronic submission. I don't read it ever. (laughs) I just, I want to approach that book like a reader would, and I want to pick it up and I want to read it. And if, if I get past chapter three and I'm, I'll read to the end then, but if I can't get past chapter three, it's going to be a rejection. But, um, I don't, I think writing a synopsis is a very different skill set than writing the story itself. So I want to, I want to hear the author's voice and I want to be drawn in like any reader would fresh that first time. That's awesome. That's great. I don't read a synopsis either, but I thought I was an oddball. So we can be odd together. Absolutely. (laughs) Yeah, I found that people can't, they can write amazing stories, but not write a synopsis. (laughs) I do have to use the synopsis when I request a contract from my boss. So I do take it and I use it for that purpose, but I don't really read them. Right. (laughs) Sorry. that's (laughs) That's great advice though. So now, uh, I'll ask this one, since you're doing fiction, Susan, this is a bonus question for you. Oh, uh, lucky. How important is a prologue to read? Do you just skip the prologue or do you read the prologue? I read the prologue. Um, I've had books with prologues that I've written. Um, sometimes you need one, sometimes you don't. Um, it kind of depends on the story and what's happening with it. I don't think every story needs a prologue. I think few of them do, but uh, it's... <laughs> You, you got to, that's a hard question. I, I don't mind prologues. I will read them. Right. But I know I, I have one book that has a kind of difficult prologue and I've had to tell people if they, it's kind of that uh, trigger warning, <laughs> you know, <laughs> if you've got issues, maybe you skip the prologue and just go right into chapter one because it's going to be a little tense. Right. So, <laughs> you know, it should be like on the cover of the book, trigger warning. <laughs> right. <laughs> Well, great. And then I'll add a bonus question for you, Megan, since you're doing, I know you guys do a lot. You're doing children's fiction and nonfiction. So I know we have a bunch of children's people coming to this conference because there are are a good number of children's editors at it. Uh, Could you say anything about like a children specifically? What is your advice or what are you acquiring in children's that you might want to share out there for our, our our viewers? Thanks. That is a good bonus. Um, be really specific about who your audience is and what age group and make sure you write to that age group and the vocabulary and the, um, like it's, it's basically in line with that age bracket. Um, Cause we've gotten proposals before that are for like really young kids, but then they use these fairly like long words, not necessarily SAT words, but like definitely above that reading level. Um, and then like books for like older, like tweens or something that, it seems like it's written down a couple notches. So be really specific and intentional about nailing down that audience. And it can be a fairly specific age range, but uh, make sure that you're writing to that audience and that you stay uh, focused on that. Great. And I'll have one more bonus for both of you because I know this is important. This this has been a question that's been coming up. I figure I'll ask you guys and see what you think. Persons of color and more diverse author base has been a real trend here lately, just in, especially in the Christian market, but I know both markets are you actively acquiring writers who are diverse from different ethnic and cultural backgrounds who have great stories? And um, if so, how can they best, uh, best connect with you and let you know kind of their, their, their kind of ethnic background diversity? Would you like them to state that in a cover letter? Would you, would you like them to include kind of more of a bio in their, in their query to you? How can, how can those authors communicate more of that to you? Um, we are actively acquiring right now. Um, there's an imprint we're starting called Voices, and it's um, across Discovery House and also Our Daily Bread and all of our different publications. Um, we just published a book called Our Help. It's um, devotions by 45 different African American authors, and it's fantastic. I absolutely loved working on that book, but we're trying to um, include more books in that imprint. So um, if if there are more diverse voices and like out, outside of the you know mainstream or majority voice, then please, please come talk to me. Um, and then, yeah, you can just throw something in your bio, like your author bio about that. And I, um, I'll, I'll read that. Or if it's, um, yeah, if it's something that's really important to you, you can throw it right in the synopsis. But if you throw it in your author bio, I will read it. Great. What about, what about you, Susan? 
we're not actively acquiring anything like that. I wouldn't say that we would, would I, when I went turn something down, a great story is a great story. Right. And I think that's what it really comes down to, regardless of uh, the culture in it or the race. I've read some amazing stories that have come from other cultures because we have open submissions. And I've had some come from Muslim and Hindu cultures. Unfortunately, we're a Christian publisher, so we can't right. do those stories. <laughs> but they are fascinating when you can you can bring me there and I can smell it and as I read and I can sense that environment. So I think there's a place for it, definitely. And I would be open to it. We just haven't had many of them. Great. Well, wonderful. Well, I know we've taken uh, about 15 minutes here, so I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedules and um, getting blitzing through those <laughs> edits so you can be here with us. And uh, just remember everyone, as you see Susan and Megan at the conference, just say hi, tell them you saw them on the video. Uh, and just just make that personal connection because it makes it more fun for us to come to the conference and know that people are just excited that we're there and want to connect and uh, kind of do life together. And so thank you guys for taking time out. And we will see you in June at Right to Publish. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.